Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Eglin, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about plotting. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of what I am going to do with my plotting and then actually how I did it. So here I've got a web page that I've created, um, ASP.NET web page, and I've got this little button down here that says plot. I actually have a series of values here that uh, in this case are for dimensionless rainfall. And when I click plot, I pop up a window, and voila, I have this beautiful little plot. You can actually follow the plot and see individual values. And so let's talk a little bit about how I did that. Notice that it also has a title. Um, it's in a plot window. Um, now, part of this is going to be the Ajax, but part of this is actually going to be um, the, the plotting itself. So let's knock this out of the way. Let's go ahead and stop the debugger. And then let's look a little bit of how this occurred. Well, first things first, I'm going to take you to two plot libraries. First, I'm going to take you to high charts which is a JavaScript, uh, a JavaScript library. This is actually the backbone of the plotting that you saw there. It's, act, it's using HighCharts.js. And um, you should, I've got some lectures on in my COP4813, which is the JavaScript programming class, on how to use HighCharts. It's a very useful and incredibly flexible tool for putting plots into web pages. However, we're using .NET here, and you want to really be able to integrate this with .NET. Now, nicely enough, CodePlex has two libraries that you can use. I've done a lecture on one of them is .NET High Charts, and I've done some lectures on .NET High Charts already. So I want to show you the other one, um, which in this case is HighCharts.NET. Both of these work excellent, and they're both essentially wrappers for the HighCharts JavaScript language. They wrapper it inside of a .NET. Now, one thing to note about this, if, you, if you're using highcharts.net, uh, there are a few things that you need to do. One is which is looking at the documentation. You're going to have to do some things here. So we'll look at this get started in the documentation. Okay, well, one of the nice things about this is, is that when you're putting a chart into uh, a page, well, the first thing you got to do is you've got to download and install this. It will install directly into Visual Studio, it gives you a DLL, which is uh, going to be accessible as a reference. Let's go back and look at that. Um, what do we mean by reference here? Well, if you look over here in your Solution Explorer, you've got references. And this is all the different um, libraries that you're using. So right here, I've got one reference here, which is to high chart. And if I were to add another reference here, well, after I've downloaded this, um, I'm going to take the highcharts.dll and I'm going to stick it in the bin directory of my project, the bin directory of my project. Okay, I can I, I can bring that up um, and show you where that is. So if I go to my Visual Studio um, 2012, you can't see this, but if I go to Visual Studio Projects, um, okay, I'm going to come over here. I have my bin directory. And I'm going to put that those DLLs inside of here. So there's the highcharts.dll um, actually inside that bin directory. And that's a good place for you to store it. Then I actually have to set up a reference to it. So I go to References. I go Add Reference. And in this case, when I'm adding this specific reference, it's going to take a little while to do this. Um, I, I will do it by browsing. I can pick this out of the bin directory. Um, and then it adds the DLL to there. That's step one. So now you have access to all the classes in that DLL. Next step is you have to tell the web.config that this is going to be used. And this is done in the controls section underneath pages. So if I go to my web config here and I go to my pages section, I have pages, controls, and I've added the high chart from the namespace high chart UI into here with the assembly high chart. So in other words, that assembly that's in my reference is actually going to be able to be used as a tag prefix so I can actually add high charts directly into my um, to my pages. Okay, so now let's go, that's that's the second step that you have. And now when you're doing this, the only thing that you need to have is on the page that is actually going to use the high chart, you have to have a reference to the jQuery. Now, in the example that they show here, jQuery 1.3.2 is the version of jQuery that they're using. Um, I found that this works with version 1.7.1, but does not work with 1.7.2. And how I did this was I actually created a 
test page um, in my pages. So I have this test plot routine. And uh, in this test plot routine, I have a reference to jQuery. Or actually, I'm sorry, it works with 1.7.2. It also works with 1.7.1, but I actually went to the root APIs, which are at ajax.googleapis.com, ajax slash lib slash jQuery slash 1.7.2, which, by the way, are the same in the documentation. And I tried out different versions of the jQuery library to see which ones actually work with the high charts. Then what I did is I simply put a high chart into my content. So in other words, if I run this, I'm going to get a little sample plot right here. Now this isn't actually anything that's part of my project, but it's a sample plot. Well, what I did was to make that sample plot work is I put into the CS into the, into the load behind in the page load in the code behind I put the sample that was actually supplied on the website for highcharts.net so it says now that you're ready to create your own charts I said went to creating a line chart okay there's the line that I add in my documents um, there's the line that I add in my ASPX file and here's the code behind Please note that when you're doing the code behind, one thing it doesn't tell you is what libraries are, are I'm sorry, namespaces you need to put usings for. And they're right here. It's highcharts.core and highchart.core.data.chart. Now, if you didn't know this, you can easily come back to your high chart library, right click on it, view an object browser, and then actually search that for the objects that you're, you're, that you're using in the code so that you know what library they're going to be in. So that's pretty nice. I actually had this ability to create this and I will put the test, um, I'll put my test plot routine and my test plot routine here um, up on to my class page so you can grab the code. But what you saw me do in that example was I actually had this little pop-up window that popped up the chart and that's going to be kind of important on how that works. Now what that is is that is a user control. So let's come down here to my user controls and I have a, a user control called plot window. Let me find it here. You see plot window. Now if I look at this user control I've actually got a few things that I do here. Uh, one of which is I use Ajax. I want this to pop up. Okay, That's the whole point of it. It's a pop up plot. So I am using the Ajax Control Toolkit. And the tool that I'm using is called the Ajax Modal Pop-Up Extender. The Modal Pop-Up Extender, what it does is it takes a panel. The panel is just something that contains other controls, and it makes it so the panel can pop up. Now to do this, you have to have, one, the pop-up control ID. What, is the, what are you going to pop up when you click a button? So the pop-up control ID is panel one. This is panel one down here and the panel one actually contains the chart. So you're really learning two things here. And I have some other stuff here. I have a button that is done. Okay. Well, I also have this um, the cancel control ID. Alright, so the cancel control ID is going to be what you do to bring the pop-up down. Well, that cancel control is right there within that panel. So when I click the button inside the panel, the plot disappears. Okay, the other one that I have is a target control ID. What button do I need to press to pop the sucker up? Okay, well that's going to be my BTN plot, which is up here, um, which is a button that's actually in my user control. So here's the beauty of this thing. I can pop this user control onto a page. It will only show the plot button. Okay, that's it. Now, when I click the plot button, it will use the modal pop-up extender to pop up the panel, and the panel contains the chart. Beautiful. Okay, because there's my chart. It's inside. Here's my panel right there. Here's the two things that are inside the panel, my um, chart and my button that brings it down. Here's something that's not in the panel, the button that brings it up, and the modal pop-up extender extends the panel so it's a pop-up. Those are all the different pieces. Now, I want the plot to do what I pop up what I want. So how do I do that? Well, in my code, 
I actually am going to bind my plot to a series. So let's go right here to my, um, okay, I have in here a list of Siri. Siri are actually things that get plotted. And that is a object that I'm globally declaring in my class UC plot window. Now the other things you have here you're going to have to set. So some of them I set by properties like the title sets the title of the line. There's only a set accessor for this property. The property is title and it's going to set the title of the plot. There's only a set accessor for the subtitle which is going to set the subtitle. The y-axis title is going to be the title that's on the y-axis. What I do though is I make sure that I didn't already set a y-axis title here. So I remove any existing titles that might have been there. So I do a remove all. Now this remove all uses something that you might not have seen before which is a predicate. And the predicate says I'm going to remove all based on the predicate item for the condition item ID equals title. Okay. Now the way that reason that works is is when I actually add a new title, which I do by adding a new y-axis item, which is of title, which is of type title, okay, and ID being title, I set the ID equal to title. So if the item ID is equal to title, it gets removed from the y-axis, which is an object within the line. Now part of this is you will have to learn a lot of the object hierarchy of how high charts works. The high charts object hierarchy that is used in .NET here follows the high charts hierarchy here. So if you have a line which is a high chart um, line, okay, basically line plot, okay, it has a property called y-axis, okay, and the y-axis has a method called remove all. After I remove any previous title, I add a new title. So I do y-axis add and then I add a new y-axis item. Okay, remember that was what this was, was a y, uh, a y, there was a y-axis items that need to be added. And in this case, the y-axis item that is being added has two properties. One is a title, and the title has to be a title, okay, a, a property type, of class type title, and it has an ID. Okay, it may look complex, but in reality is it's just understanding how objects contain objects. Now, over here, x-axis values. Okay, I want to set the x-axis values, and the way those are set is you use an object array. So, I have to pass an object array to set the property x-axis values to be an object array. So, in my code, I create an object array of whatever I want my x-axis to be. The first thing I do is I remove any previous x-axis values that are in there, just the same way I did before with the predicate, the item condition being item ID equals value, so it removes all of them that have the ID of values. Okay, and then I add a new XSS item with the categories. Categories is where you're going to set the values equal to value, and the value is an object array. That is what's being passed, an object array. Remember, object bracket bracket denotes an object array. Now, I can have more than one plot on my x-axis. So instead of using the property like I did for my x-axis values and my y-axis title and my title and my subtitle, I'm going to use a method here called add y-axis values. And I pass it two things. One is a string legend and one is an object array, which are the values. Now this has to be an object array and these need to be able to be uh, created, the values need to be able to be converted to numbers. Okay, so it's an object array, but the object array is going to be an array of something that is a new can, is is numeric. So I do series dot add. Okay, remember series was declared up here. Series is a list of object type series. So I go series dot add and I add a new series with the name equal name and the data equal the value passed to it as that object array. Last but not least, I bind this. In the page load, I do a data bind. So I set ht line, hc line data source equal to the series, hc line dot data bind, and voila, it puts all of it together. So my plot gets all those things. So the series gets bound so that it's actually, um, and that's the nice thing about this is it's data bindable that I can actually 
create those, these series and bind them in. The other ones are set directly in these properties. So you can see that the, um, the things that I set directly in properties were properties of the line chart, okay, and the things that I added by using a method were things that were actually going to be adding a series to the existing um, list called series, okay. It looks complex. It really is not that tremendously complex. It's got a lot of great capability, and I am going to make sure that you have access to all of this code. Thanks very much. Good programming.